Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're on here coming at you with another video, and today we're going to be talking about Arch Tempered Zora Magdros. Now, as per usual, we had a live stream last night, so if you guys want to go ahead and watch my first attempts on Arch Tempered Zora Magdros, you can check out that live stream. However, unlike most of the other Arch Tempers before, actually, unlike all of the Arch Tempers before, Zora Magdros, uh, I did not go in solo. Now, there's a reasoning behind that. Some of you guys will be like, oh my god, Rurikon, you can't take on Arch Tempered Zora Magdros. Actually, the uh, attempt that you guys are watching right now on screen was the first time that I tried killing him solo. And I did kill him solo, and I made plenty of mistakes throughout the fight. Was still able to kill him solo, but ultimately, the reason why I went in with a group for the very first time is because, in my opinion, uh, the Zora Magdros fight is not a fight that is very fun if you're doing it by yourself. Uh, it is not even a challenge thing like some people might think oh you just don't like the challenge No, that's not it. I just I just think it's boring I think that the Zora Magdros fight if you're doing it solo is a boring fight I say I think the same thing about Zenojiva. I think that Zenojiva, if you're doing it solo is boring I don't think it's entertaining at all I think that these are big monsters and they're supposed to be tackled as a group from a design standpoint now some of you guys might agree or might disagree with me but I do know that the overall opinion is that not a whole lot of people appreciate the Zora Magdros fight. I don't know how people feel about Zenojiva, but I just gonna feel like these are fights that excel with groups. Therefore, I went in with a group. Going solo is something that I would not advise you guys to do, because like I said, it is boring. You can see me do it here, and like I said, lots of mistakes. Still was able to bring him down. A uh, couple of things. You guys might be wondering, Rurikon, give us like hot takes on really good builds that you can do to beat the crap out of Zora Magdros. And what I can tell you is that if you want the fastest possible way to do it you might want to check out the game economist's video i'll probably link it up in here somewhere uh where he goes and he tells you about uh cluster bombs but as you guys know i'm not a big fan of actually using cluster bombs i try to avoid that as much as i personally can because it's just not really my playstyle. so the way that i did it is i used the lance because the lance makes the early parts of the fight particularly easy you just kind of poke 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 and then you do the, the counter attack and usually it lines up just about right with when the uh, when the explosion's about to happen. So you can block it fairly easy, but ultimately it's like you don't have to bring a lance. It doesn't even matter what weapon you bring. You can bring whatever the fuck weapon you want. The only thing that really matters is that you bring the heavy artillery skill. That's the most important thing to bring to this particular fight, in my opinion is the heavy artillery skill. Anything else can be whatever the hell you want. You want a charge blade, bring a charge blade. You want sword and shield, bring sword and shield. Switch axe, whatever. Light bow gun might be a little bit harder because I don't know how it will do damage wise. I haven't tested it yet. But either way, bring whatever the hell you want. Doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Just make sure that you bring heavy artillery for when the cannon phase shows up. You don't even have to break all of the cores. As a matter of fact, in the attempt that you guys are watching, I only broke the two first cores. I didn't manage to finish the third one. And I gotta be completely honest, when I do normal Zora Magdros, one of my favorite things is jumping back on top of it. It actually makes the fight more fun for me to actually go back on top of Zora Magdros and actually do more stuff there, but... In the arch-tempered version, he's constantly doing stuff that knocks you over, knocks you to the ground, and just like, it, it's very frustrating, so I just decided, you know what, it's a waste of time to do it, uh, because he's constantly just knocking you down. Like, every time that I went up there during the live stream, if you guys go watch that, every single time that I went up there, he would like start charging up his ultimate attack, and then people would have to bind him in order to prevent that. So, that's the other thing. A lot of you guys, I've been hearing, at least in my chat last night, a lot of people were saying, oh my god! The defense barrier doesn't have enough hit points. He always breaks the defense barrier. That's because you need to interrupt his big charge-up attack, okay? Zora Magros has a big charge-up attack, but it takes a long time to act for him to actually cast it. So he'll get the warning. Usually one of the one of the dudes, I think it's a serious handler, she'll go like, oh my god, he's charging up the super mega hyper attack. We're all gonna die. And when they start saying that stuff, what you gotta do is you gotta pick up one of those binder shots. They're the bigger ballista looking shots. There's only like two of them in the box, even though once you pick it up, it just disappears. Always have one of those with you. And then whenever you hear he's charging up his big attack, go up to a ballista fire. Just instantly fire it. Like, it's a big, huge target. You don't even have to target him in the head. You don't have to target it. Just instantly aim it at his general direction. Fire it. Automatically interrupts that attack. And that is going to keep your barrier alive for a whole lot longer. Like I said, even though I made a lot of mistakes, uh, I was still able to interrupt most of the attacks. Sometimes some of the NPCs will come to your aid 
and they will fire the binder shots and they will interrupt the attacks themselves. So it's not like it's even you that has to do it all the time. Another thing that interrupts the big charging attack is the Dragonator. So make sure that you go down to the boat. You'll see that most of the time that I spend on this particular fight, I'm actually on the boat. Now, the reason the boat is so useful is because if you don't know, when you go down to the boat, there's actually um, two dudes constantly loading cannons on the boat, and there's just like three cannons all lined up. So you can basically load the cannon in the middle and start firing that cannon non-stop all the time. As a matter of fact, in the build that I'm using, I actually have Pro Transporter, which means I move faster when I'm carrying um, the cannonballs which is another useful thing to have. You don't have to have that if you don't want to, but heavy artillery, I would definitely advise it because it increases the damage of the cannons. But basically, make sure that you're constantly firing the cannons whenever there is um, whenever there's a, a fully loaded cannon next to you. Make sure to use the Dragonator uh, to interrupt the first attack, or if you fail like I did, I failed to interrupt the first charge attack. Just use the Dragonator as fast as you can so that you get two uses of the Dragonator throughout the fight. And that's pretty much it. Just load up the cannons and fire them. That, that's what I would advise you to do. I wouldn't advise you to go after the fancy stuff like going down to the belly and whatnot because it's just not reliable in the Arch-Tempered version. He moves around too much. He shakes you off too much. And it's just a whole lot of wasted time. So to be honest, in this fight, I would never even go up on top of him once the barrier phase begins. Just like load up those cannons, fire the cannons off as you can, and interrupt the special attack whenever he is doing it. That's that's the whole fight. If you ever run out of uh, cannonballs and you feel like you need to fire the ballista or something, try aiming to the very tip of his horn where the, the head core is because you'll deal additional damage there, but it's a little bit tricky to land as you guys will see throughout this attempt because I'm going to let the whole attempt play out if you want to see how I did it. Um, but, but yeah, it, it's just... I, I, I was disappointed with this fight. It's just a boring fight. Nothing really interesting happened. Like, I think most of us were expecting that Nergigante, when he shows up, that he was going to be the arch-tempered version of Nergigante. It's not. It's not even a tempered Nergigante. It's just a regular-ass Nergigante. And you don't even get to kill it. He runs away. He runs away after a while. I mean, I'm pretty sure that Team Darkseid's probably going to try to kill him, and they're probably going to do it too, because I think it's pretty doable to actually kill him. But I wouldn't worry too much about it. However, I do feel that you do have to kill him. Not, not kill him. You do have to fight him this time around. Whereas previously, you could completely ignore him when he shows up on the regular Zora Magdros fight. On this version of the fight, you do have to fight him. You do have to repel him. Otherwise, um, otherwise he's not going to go away. But then again, it's like, to be completely honest, there's not that much to do. When Eric Gigante is there anyway. There's not really that much to do during the fight. So you just, that, that's the only thing to do. You go ahead and you fight Eric Gigante. Anyways, uh, I'm going to be showing you guys the build that I used because I do know that a lot of you guys will want to know what the build is. So I used the Kuliaku head just because it'd be funny and because it has Pro Transporter. So I use that. Got a sharp jewel in there, heavy artillery jewel. Then we got the basal male beta. Because whenever I do a lance build, I like having at least three blocks. So we're going to get two blocks from uh, basal male. Then we're going to put two attack jewels in there. If you don't have two attack jewels, don't stress. Like I said, it's not that important to hit any particular thresholds. Like, you could come into this fight almost naked with two pieces of heavy artillery, and you'd still be able to do it just fine. Uh, but preferably don't do that because the fire damage does hurt a little bit. And then you got Valhazak uh, Bracer's Gamma. Uh, that's because it's going to give us dragon damage, and we are using the Fiendish Tower, which does deal dragon damage, and uh, Zora Magdros is... Three stars weak to dragon damage, so we're going to be going for that. Going to be using two jumping jewels. That's just because I like having jumping jewels on the lance. Uh, it's not actually needed. As a matter of fact, you might even uh, bring in tremor resist instead. Might be a little bit more useful. Then you got Nergante Coil Beta uh, with a Tenderizer Jewel. That's just to give me a little bit more attack so that I can break the cores a little bit faster. Because the cores do take a while to break. Uh, and the lance is not the heaviest um, damage dealer in the game. Then you got Dante's Leather Boots Alpha to bring in uh, the weakness exploit because uh, those um, those cores pretty much all count as weak. So therefore you're going to get uh, a nice chunk of affinity through that. And in the boots we use heavy artillery as well as Iron Wall Jewel. Then we wrap everything up with a Handicraft Charm to put the lance into white sharpness which then obviously you'll want to sharpen it up before you actually start attacking so that you get as much time as you possibly can out of it. The finalized build is going to be sporting attack boost level 4, dragon boost level 3, weakness exploit level 3, handicraft level 3, guard level 3, heavy artillery level 2, which is the max, uh, event extender level 2, pro transporter level 1, and protective polish level 1. But like I said, you don't have to do any of this, okay? 
just bring in heavy artillery with whatever weapon you want. Um, one of the things that I tried as well was I was considering using um, the insect glaive in order to, you know, jump on top of his head and uh, just start spamming your aerial attacks that way. Does not work. Uh, anything below the very top of his head is not going to trigger you to jump back up, so you just end up falling down. So I would not advise uh, the insect glaive if that is your plan. However, the insect glaive is still pretty good to break the course. So it is good that way. It's just not good if you want to try to hit the head during um, during the second phase. Second phase, your best time is definitely, you know, load up cannons, fire cannons, load up cannons, fire cannons, which is why I think it's more fun if you're able to do it with friends, uh, if you're able to get a group together, four people, it will make it more fun. Like, you guys can watch during the live stream. We're actually having fun with it. We're just messing around. And the whole encounter is super easy if you just have people firing cannons the whole time. Uh, but again, it's not a particularly challenging fight. It's just a boring fight. And that's where my disappointment stems from. Like, because all of the other fights, there, there was challenging elements to it, right? Like, friggin' Arch-Tempered Lunastra, dude, you're crazy? You know how hard that shit was? That was fucked up. It was really hard. It took me a while to actually wrap her, my head around the proper build to go ahead and get her. But, you know, it was an interesting fight, at least. Sure, you could get one shot and all that stuff, and not everybody enjoys that particular aspect of, of, of the challenge. But it was not this long drawn out thing that I feel that this fight is. Particularly if you're not using clusters, which is my case, because I don't like using clusters. I found the Lance to be a really good weapon for that. Um, but um, yeah, I'm gonna let the rest of the hunt play out. If you guys have any particular questions that you'd like to ask me about this, uh, I will be doing, um, I'll, I'll be trying to do a, a build with the armor. The armor set was also not super impressive, which is weird, because like, kind of feel like a lot of the Gamma sets were a little bit of game changers. So I really expected Lunastra Gamma set to be a game changer. It wasn't. I expected this one to give, be a game changer. In terms of skills, it's kind of not. But at the same time, it is going to give you access to critical status, which is something that I've never used all that much because the original Zora Magdras armor kind of sucks for just about everything. Um, so I'm going to try, probably do a couple of blast builds with that. We'll probably see some sword and shield, some charge blade, because those are my two weapons that I really like using. Uh, so I'll probably be doing something with that, uh, a couple of new builds. But ultimately, I don't know. I just, I just felt it was very anticlimactic. And I think, I think that the stream also echoed that because we peaked, we peaked at around uh, 800 people watching and people were just coming in watching. They were like, oh, it's the same thing. Okay. And leaving. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, th there's not that much change to the fight. It's just a souped-up version of Zora Magdros. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. If you guys have questions, uh, make sure to ask them in the comment section. I'll try to reply as best as I can. And, uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, leave it a like. If you're new here and you like the stuff that I do, subscribe. Hit the bell notification icon so that you might actually receive notifications. And uh, here's two video suggestions that you guys might enjoy. Actually, two video suggestions come at the end of the video. Never mind. <laughs> but yeah, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.
Right. 